I mean, how, how far do you want to go back? But I went from being a really shy child, being bullied, being different. And that was before I ever lost my leg. That was just for being foreign or unusual or, yeah, there were so many reasons, but I learned to hide. So here I am. I went from also having many body issues passed down from generations of women. Yeah, yeah, I was very much encouraged as a child to think of thin as beautiful. As a child, as a teenager, as an adult, I mean, I don't know. It was seen as the only thing to be, really. And anyone who was fatter or curvier or plus size, which is the average size, <laughs> I won't go there. Um, yeah, it was kind of like, it was always placed in the friend role, always placed in the sidekick, never the main. I mean, I genuinely, I hated myself at one point as a young adult. And I was at that time, had no, I had all my limbs, I had what could be quoted as a normal, slim body, whatever you like, and I hated it. I hated all of it. I just thought no one would want to see that. And the irony is that I got to a point of losing my leg from cancer, and that pushed me to really get to the point of, like, who am I and what do I want to be? How would amputation affect my relationship to my body? Um, well, I mean, at the beginning, it obviously affected it like, yeah, funny, I had to stretch my leg there when you said that, <laughs> in all its glory. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess over time, at the beginning, it was a feeling of something missing and it was a feeling of being off balance all the time. And like, I felt like there was something wrong. Like I was too different. I was, yeah, I was missing something and I wasn't whole. Like for quite a while after amputation, I felt not whole, I felt unwhole. <laughs> Um, I'm afraid of um, disappointing people and uh, being a mess. Um, or like by not being enough. <laughs> I don't feel good enough. I think I don't feel that what I'm doing is necessarily worth watching. <laughs> I just feel like. Um, I'm going to disappoint someone. <laughs> I don't know who, maybe everyone, I just myself. I don't feel right. Um, and I'm embarrassed because I'm not together. I'm embarrassed to, uh, to not be good enough, I guess. Um, and sometimes I feel like because I'm an amputee because I'm because I'm, I have one leg. I sometimes feel like I have to push myself so much f further than other people, you know, because I mean I have less energy than some people because I have to use crutches all the time, and some days are just awful. <laughs> Some days just feel so hard. <laughs> like I'll never get anything done and what's the point? <laughs>I was an amputee I had massive trust issues I mean that could be you could say emotional mental physical but particularly having become uh, I don't know if I, I say disabled I don't mind the word but for me I almost feel like I'm a one-legged woman I don't know have didn't need to really use any other words for that but I had to learn to trust people like on so many levels I had to learn to trust my autonomy to another person like you know, my partner or anyone who's helping me, like assisting me, like say, like pushing my wheelchair when I use it. That's a very scary thing because you're giving someone sort of the power to, to either let you fall or not. So now I've learned that the more I let someone hold me, you know, if I let someone take the weight of my body, that it's not too much. So. It's a big deal, actually, as someone with a disability or, you know, like just me. I have great trouble allowing someone to hold me, and I, but I think I'm, I'm getting there. And surrendering, surrendering is a good thing. You know, it's often seen as this kind of weakness or, you know, like a feminine maybe, you know, way of like just 
not not trying hard, but actually if you surrender, then comes the good stuff. Then the juicy sort of you know fertile ground of. Um, I mean, like I'm thinking of this painting here. You know, you just kind of I just let it happen, and you just there's something really beautiful in in just kind of not having any agenda to put on it, just like, whoa, just like, let's just let the body do what it wants to do and let the paint do what it wants to do. And then, um, yeah, come, come what may, I think I personally am really enjoying <laughs> letting be, mm -hmm. you know, without, without forcing, letting it all just come. Everyone has their own ideas of what's beautiful, but to me, um, from what I observe in the world and from what I feel inside myself, is authenticity. I think, it, and nature is beautiful in all its weirdness and variety. Like you can have a tree that is so twisted and knotted and kind of broken, but again, it's, it's just it's beautiful. It's in its treeness, you know. Why don't we judge that as ugly when, with ourselves, if something is Kind of different or weird or freaky it's this is also beautiful it's also part of the whole and i think yeah i think beauty to me is someone being so completely themselves some people will judge you and that's you know that is scary that's a very scary thing like you put something out there with great you know with your heart and with joy and with love and then someone just goes nah not my cup of tea and i guess you kind of have to be okay with that if you're going to do anything that's worth anything. Don't wait to be yourself until you die. Because <laughs> I waited long enough and I'm finally really realizing the joy of being myself. Yeah, I think vulnerability is where we connect as humans. I mean, it's just boring to have one type of body be the thing that's held up as on a pedestal. It's just that Bye.
Oh, yeah.